stuck in shall we so what have we got here well we've got a lot of neural dsp plugins we've got the archetype nolly 14 cali another nolly and the polini up here as well and these are the ones that i currently have you could load up any of them quite obviously and the one plugin you probably don't recognize down here in the corner this this is the key to everything this is by a company called kushview and it's a plugin called Element. And it's a pretty powerful little thing. It works as a standalone as well as inside a door, so you can load it up into Cubase or Logic or whatever you use. And the way it works is each one of these squares on here is what's called a node. And it basically is whatever plugin you want to load up. And it runs from within Element. Now, maybe not the best way of explaining it, but Basically, if you look at the names, this here is this one. This is this version of Archetype Nolly. This one here is this one of the Fort and Cali. This block here is the Polini. This block here is the second Archetype Nolly I've got loaded. Uh, for those of you who know how OBS and streaming screen capture devices work, this here is my node setup for Restream, which is my audio out going into my screen capture device. This is my room correction software because I have a very bass trap room end here. So it's incredibly bassy for me. So only I can hear this because this is going to my speakers, which is set up down here at the bottom. And this is just my audio interfaces output. Up here at the top is my audio basis input. And here is my MIDI pedal board, which is my Behringer FCB 1010, which is down on the floor. So you can't see that. And in a moment, we're going to go into how you set that up because it took me quite a while to figure this out and there's quite a lot of information to go through. So it is going to be a longer video and I'm going to try to go into as much depth as I can every step of the way because this is tough. It's taken me a good few weeks to even get halfway towards doing this. So uh, it's not 100% perfect yet, but I've got it up and running to the point where I'm actually pretty happy with the results and I'm getting what I want out of it. Some improvements to be made and I'll probably make a follow-up video for this later on but for now I'm pretty happy with the results okay so let's set up our MIDI controller in this case I'm using the Behringer FCB 1010 uh, pretty inexpensive quite well known in the guitar world I used to have one of these many years ago I actually picked this one up last week specifically to do this job and it's worked pretty well so when it comes to MIDI in general, you have three types of messages. Uh, PC, program change. Uh, CC, which I think is control change or constant change or something like that. I forget the actual name. And notes, as in A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, so on. And PC and CC will not work for what we want here. We can only use notes. So that's what I'm going to show you how to set up here. Now, what I'm going to show you now is what you have to do for every individual pedal, which is a little bit tedious, but it doesn't take that long. And you're basically repeating the process every single time. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm on bank zero. Uh, you can be on whatever bank you want. Uh, let's start with the first one. To enter the editing menu, hold down the down button for a couple of seconds. And you can see we've got the green flashing light at the top. Press up to confirm. And now you're gonna have this, most likely anyway. Uh, option number one, eight and nine, or all turned on, everything else is turned off. Uh, eight and nine are fine, there are expression pedals, we don't need to worry about them. Number one, we want to turn this off. This is the PC. So hold down for a couple of seconds and the light will turn off. Now the important bit 
is turning on number 10. So hold down the button, it will turn on. Now, press it quickly again, it will start flashing. When it's flashing, press up to change to number select, that's what we need to change. And it happens to be 01, which is actually what I want for this first one. But let's just say it had some random number in there. You press 0, 1, 4, pedal number 1. Press up again to go back to the select menu. That's important. Because then, when you're back there, you press down 1, uh, sorry, press the down button to save it. That's it. That's all you have to do. But you have to do it for every single pedal. So let's look at it again. Hold down. It goes into the green flashing mode. So up to confirm, you will need to turn off number one so that you got these three lights up here. Turn number 10 back on if you need to by holding it down. Press the button to change the number, which you press up. Enter number two, zero two. Press up to confirm and hold down to save. Job done. Repeat for as many banks as you want, as uh, many pedals as you want, for as many banks as you want, and you've got a, a lot of options there. And that's all you need to do. Everything else is done within Element, and I'm gonna show you that now. So, when you get Element, now it's not a free plugin. Uh, some people seem to think it is, but um, you can download it as an open source file and do your own thing with it free of charge. But, you have to pay $2 for it. Let's be real, just pay $2. This plugin is fantastic and it's exactly what I needed and it's worked a treat for me so far and it's more than paid for itself as far as I'm concerned in convenience. So let's just assume you pay the $2, you get it, you install it and you've got it open here. Now you're going to have only a few of these, audio input, audio output, MIDI in and MIDI out when you first load it up and it will look actually... it will look like this when you first open it. And here's your MIDI input, here's your MIDI output, sorry, audio input, audio output, MIDI input, MIDI output. Now if we just right click and get rid of them for now, start com entirely from scratch. Now we're not gonna build up the uh, setup we had a second ago, I'm just gonna show you how to use this plugin real quick. Here's the basics. Go to file, go to preferences, and have a look through here and just make sure all your audio is set up correctly. Then come in here and go audio inputs. For me, it's my Focusrite USB, little two input audio, ca audio card on the table there. And if I right click again and do audio outputs, you can probably see where this is going. Now, because we are gonna be doing MIDI, I'm gonna add the MIDI one while I'm at it. Now I'm not using MIDI out at my I don't, it doesn't go any further for me, so I'm not gonna bother adding the MIDI out, but if you wanna go further and do your own thing, feel free to play around. So, let's add a neural DSP plugin. Because once you know how to do this once, you know how to do it every single time. So let's load up Nolly. Now this crazy little plugin is loading up other plugins within it. So any second now, we're gonna see Archetype Nolly load up and there it is huge let's make that smaller and drag it over here so you can see what's really going on so let's give it a let's not do a lead one let's just do that one because it's a clean one that I like so if I turn my guitar volume up oh a whole lot of nothing well that's because we haven't really done anything yet First thing you want to do, grab and connect. And do it again if you want to do it in stereo. These little green dots are your audio connections. You need to link it all from start to finish. Any dead ends? Well, it's a dead end. You need to make sure everything's covered. So you take your audio output from there to there to there. Now all of a sudden, we have sound. Now here's the thing. I can hear it, but you can't because of the way OBS works. So I am gonna quickly add something that you guys do not need to do, but just so you can hear what's going on. Uh, it's in here somewhere, there it is. 
So here, this is what's set up to go to my screen capture device. I can drag the output any number of times I want. So it's literally as simple as that. So once you've got those audio connections made there, double click, it'll load the actual plugin itself. Now I'm not gonna go into details of this because it's not really needed for this, it's just so you guys can hear it. Uh, so I'm gonna set this to local broadcast. I'm gonna do a whole video specifically for this because it's useful to know how to do these sort of applications if that's what you want, but that's not useful for this video. This is purely so you guys can actually hear it through my screen capture. So we can close that. <laughs> sudden you've got audio if you want to go ahead and add more just add away there they are and you can connect them in any order you want and you can bring anything and you can bring the audio input all over the place and the outputs all over the place but to save us all the hassle I'm going to go back to the one we were looking at at the start and that's my main setup now that's the one that I run pretty much constantly now and it's a work in progress for sure. This has been difficult to figure out, but we'll get there. <laughs> so the thing I struggled with the most was the MIDI side of it. It is far easier to get the audio up and running, but getting the MIDI has been very difficult. And I've narrowed it down to a few things, which we'll go into here. Let me just load these guys back up. So we've got them all available because it's going to be useful to see them all at once. So on my Behringer pedal board, I have 10 pedals per bank. Zero, uh, one to five and six to 10 on the second row. So for the sake of this demo, and actually just because of the way I like to play, I've got a bunch of presets just kind of laid out that I use and I just jump between them all as I wish. So before we start looking in, let's actually look at the MIDI. So you can see from this point here, it connects to my four Neural GSP plugins. It only connects to them, it doesn't connect to the audio outputs down here or anything like that because it doesn't need to. The only things I'm looking to control are these guys. Within each of them, if I load up the right thing, there we go. There we go. MIDI, MIDI, MIDI for days. All of them, at the moment, have 10 presets made and that basically tells this set of MIDI, every time I press option number one, my preset number one, this line on all of them is gonna receive that MIDI information and it's going to adjust accordingly. Now let's look even further into the specifics because you need to get this kind of exact for it all to work. Note preset is the only thing that I can get to work in this. CC and PC messages from the MIDI output doesn't seem to work for me. So it has to be note. And we've already seen how to set up the FCB 1010 specifically to do this. If your MIDI controller doesn't use uh, note messaging, which I'm sure it will do, Honestly, I can't I can't help you. I'm not the one for it. It's been a pain in the ass figuring this out on my own and I've I can only really tell you from the pedal board that I have. So uh, I'm sure you'll find it a little bit of Googling or YouTubing. But anyway, so my first patch, which I've got selected at the moment, is my clean sound. Clean mid ambience two, to be precise. And I've got that set up to C sharp zero. C, C zero doesn't seem to want to work, so just ignore it. I put it onto here, and all of my plugins have a preset for C sharp zero. C sharp zero, C sharp zero, even my delay one down here. So, what happens is every time I press that, all four of these receive. A MIDI command and the first one up here is the patch I want so I load up the patch on here I load up my null patch and this is just a silent thing everything is set to zero so this if you look up here at the top audio is coming into it but nothing's coming out I silence it within the plugin 
and I I have this one turned on because I'm actually using some effects in here but in this one as well you see we've got null and we've got null there so this one again audio comes in but no audio goes out you have to do that from within the plugins if you want them to be silent because all three of these and this one they're all turned on and active all the time so from there, my first instance of Architect Nolly loads the actual preset that I'm looking for. This one goes silent, this one goes silent, and this one has some uh, a second row of effects, which is just my delay and reverb. If I go to a different patch, which I know is on a different preset, this is actually preset number two, the next one in line, my Archetype Nolly is now on my null patch. You can see everything has gone set to zero. And I've got my Selenium Forest Rhythm, which is a uh, Polini preset I've been working on. So, so quite a low gain, uh, very friendly in the mids, uh, chunky uh, rhythm sound. It's quite nice and fun to play with. And you can see my effects have now turned themselves off there. And we've got a null on the, on the Polini here as well. So right now, all three of these have been silenced and only this one is what you're hearing. And if we go into the MIDI on all of them to look at that again, I won't do this one for now. You can see that on line two, if I do it on, I'll do it on Polini because it's easier to see. Line two is next in line. So preset one was C sharp zero. Now we're on D zero, the next note in sequence. Simple as that. And you can see it goes D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, so on. That's kind of the key to it, just go in line. All of them do the exact same thing. And I have a note preset, note preset, note preset, all the way down. And I go null, 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 because I want this, I want the Polini plugin to be silent on all of them, apart from numbers seven and eight. If we look at seven and eight, it could be null, null, it's gonna be null and null on here. So if I close that real quick, and I'll quickly just jump between a few of them so you can kind of see this all happening. So. we got Just the Fortin playing at the top. My fascinating rhythm preset, I say mine, is part of the uh, presets that come with it. One of my favorites, so I really, really like it. If I go to a Polini sound, you can see null, null, and I've got my Electric Sunrise solo patch happening. And I've got delays turned and reverbs turned on down here as well. <laughs> I can't remember how to play guitar, it seems. I definitely can't remember what's going on. But anyway, <laughs> moving on from that. Um, you see how it's all kind of actually quite simple once you get set up. Getting set up is the ball lake. It takes quite a long time to do the FCB 11010 uh, because you have to do every single pedal as you go throughout the whole set of banks. And you have to load, for every single button on your MIDI controller, you have to load up a preset in every single instance of all of your plugins. But it is a small price to pay for the level of convenience this brings. Like, man, it's so great. It is so great being able to just jump between all of these now. I've been wanting to do this for weeks and it's super difficult. I tried doing it within Cubase. It was a nightmare. I tried doing it on its own and I just could not figure it out. This, this little unit down here is fantastic. It really is. So you can load your MIDI in, you send it wherever you want. You can load your audio, you can send it wherever you want. All of my audio, all three of these, go through this plugin before it comes to me or my speakers. You have so much control, it's fantastic. And not only that, while searching for a solution for controlling all of these, it solved another problem I've got. And I'm gonna do some separate videos on these, which is sending audio from an external sound card into OBS or a screen capture software. Because you're using an external sound card, it can't capture the audio very easily. You have to set up a redirectional plugin. This plug in here will load up any plugin you want. So that's what I'm able to do. That's what this is. This is the audio line that you guys are hearing. I'm not actually hearing this. 
I'm hearing this one because I actually use this piece of kit as well. The same issue I had with that. I couldn't load this up beforehand. If I wanted to use just Archetype Nolly just to do some riffing on my desktop, I had my untreated audio sound. So it was super boomy and bassy and actually quite annoying to listen to because this part of the room that I'm in happens to be a really bad bass trap. So this has solved more than one problem for me. I can now load that up and hear it. And you guys don't have to hear it as well because you don't want to hear this. This cuts all the bass out. It sounds awful to listen to on your end because it's made specifically for me and my room in, that I'm in here. So yeah, this thing, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic little thing. Uh, I wish it was easier getting the MIDI up and running because I've had this for about a week and I've taken that long to figure out how to get the MIDI working. Uh, I even bought a new pedal board. I, didn't, I had something else other than the FCB 1010, but it's a good pedal board I had. I've had one in the past, so I figured I'd get one again and really figure it out for that. Um, you have to specifically set up the board to send uh, note messages. CC and PC don't seem to work very well in here for some, excuse me, for some reason. But there we are. Uh, I will make a follow-up video on this later on because the only issue I have right now is if I go from a patch that has delays and reverbs to a patch that doesn't my delays and reverbs get cut off. And I haven't been able to figure out a way around this because any kind of deactivating these or turning the mix down or somehow trying to stop the audio coming in or out between patches just doesn't work. And I think it's functionality that's missing within the Neural DSP plugins. But I'm gonna keep trying to search for it. And if I figure it out, I'll do a follow-up video. But in the meantime, there you go. That is how you can use standalone your DSP plugins, all controlled by a single MIDI controller. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, for those who were interested in knowing what's happening with my Mountain Six String Strandberg copy guitar and my purple NK headless, let's get in the trem installed on it. Uh, the reason those videos are taking forever to get done is because the UK has just been in another month-long lockdown because of COVID. Uh, fortunately, that's over now, and I will be getting my Stramberg copy back in a couple of days' time, so that'll be the next video I put up. Uh, it's been refretted, stainless steel frets now, which is great, and it was quite an ordeal for the guy who did it for me in the end. So, uh, A full video and finally a review on that guitar once I've had a bit of chance to play with it. I've got some cover songs basically ready to go as well that I'm going to put up as well. So a lot of videos coming for that guitar immediately and very shortly after the NK with the new trem should be here. And for those who are interested in that, is one of the base plates for it. So uh, yeah, lots of videos for that guitar coming too as well. And not only that, I've got a lot of other guitars on order because I bought some more this week. So all sorts coming up soon. If you like this sort of stuff, uh, subscribe and enjoy. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to put a follow up to the uh, element video today and I can get those delay tails working 100% of the time instead of only half the time but you know we'll figure that out as we go and hopefully you can enjoy whichever side it is this side uh, these videos here see you in the next one